Okay. Um, good afternoon. Um, before we get started, I'd like to introduce to our team um, Dr. Dennis Fordham, who um, actually conducted our salary study, and he is here in the room in the event that we have any specific questions about the work that he he detailed. Um, today, the way that um, I have laid out our budget discussion is to look first at our salary study um, to determine what impact, since that's the largest going to be the largest portion of our budget, as it always is, um, salaries, to start there looking at our salary study summary results, and um, then take you from there into the budget so that you can actually see um, what a proposed uh, budget summary, what the summary would look like as it's played out if we were to go back and look at restoring teacher salaries somewhere to the 2009 schedule. Um, and at this point, um, that would be what we're trying to get to. So what the what our teachers' salary schedule looked like prior to um, the recession. And, and I'd like to just thank Dr. Fordham for really helping us get to some of the real important information about our district. So thank you very much. Um, you should have a packet. Everybody should have a packet that looks like this, a long 11, uh, 8 and a half by 14. Um, the first page just sort of lays out the comparison districts and the, um, the things to which we find um, how we are comparing ourselves to the two other districts. And the left-hand column lists the school systems to which we compared ourselves. Some of them are demographically similar, some of them are size similar, some of them are um, proximity, so some of our school systems that uh, we <coughs> compete with for teachers, which is why we have the, um, the areas, the school systems selected. Um, if you'll look down below the chart, you'll see um, it goes across the top. So looking at the chart, you'll see district, then FY, 2015 projected FTE, which is full-time equivalent, and then the digest. And if you'll follow those columns across, the, the words beneath actually match up. So you'll see the FY15 projected FTE for the, our school system is 19,035. And then our digest, 40%, is it, where it's coming from. It's taken from the Georgia Department of Education spreadsheet, which is used to calculation our, calculate our equalization grants. Um, for 2015, and it's based on the sales uh, ratio study for the tax year of 2012. And you can see where our digest is. Um, and then the, our weighted FTE, which is taken also from the equal, equalization grant spreadsheet. And it represents our FTE counts, which is our number of students, but it's also factoring the weights that students draw based upon the programming in which they're served. So for example, if you are served by a gifted program, you, are, you have a different weight on your FTE. Or if you're served in our special education program, um, you may also have a different weight. So looking at our weighted FTE, see we have um, 26,668 FTE, and that's weighted. Um, then the next column is our dollars per mill and, um, and our weighted FTE. So that is the net digest divided by 1,000 and then divided by the weighted FTE gives you 81.9 um, dollars per mill of weighted FTE. And if you'll just look at our comparison numbers there, you'll begin to see the trend that will emerge. Um, our dollars per weighted FTE mill is less than everybody else in our comparison group. Um, the next is our wealth rank, um, which is also taken from our equalization grant spreadsheet. And it, that spreadsheet ranks us from highest to lowest among all of the 180 Georgia districts. And rank minus one equals the number of districts with greater wealth than us. So if you look at, um, or than the district. So if you look at us, um, our wealth rank is 161 which in essence means that 160 of the 180 districts minus us, which is 179, are wealthier than the Newton County school system is. Um, then the next column is the, the wealth um, minus the average, which is the amount of dollars, um, amount by which dollars per mill per weighted FTE for the district deviates from the average. And the average, if you'll go back to the column before wealth rank, where it says yellow 106.51, that's the average. And then that average is divided by, or subtracting our um, Newton dollars per mill, which gives you the red 
bracketed under wealth minus average, 24.61. So that tells you how far beneath the average we are in terms of dollars per mil per weighted FTE. So the red parentheses shows you a 23.11% deviation from the average, which is the 106. That's the percent deviation. Moving across, um, total QBE funding is taken from the QBE allotment sheet for FY15 and represents the sum of formula earnings plus categorical grants plus the equalization grant. The next column is the total local funding at 20 mils. And what that equals is 40, the 40% 40 of the digest divided by 1,000 times 20, and it represents the ad valorem tax potential at 20 mils leveled, levied on the 2012 digest. And finally, that last column is the QBE plus local funding per 23, which is the amount of uh, class size funding, um, which equals the QBEs plus local, QBE plus local funding divided by um, the weighted FTE, which remember if you go back, it's the larger of the two numbers um, times 23. An average of 131,862 is the total funding divided by the weighted FTE times 23. So that gives you your deviation on that red column. The average number is 131,862. That's QBE plus our local money. That's our total um, per the 23. And then how far we deviate from the average. Our number is 129,154. We deviate by 2,700 um, below, which is a 2.0% deviation. So we definitely have a need to, to, um, to look, but we also have things that we have to keep in mind in terms of dollars and, and what, we, what we generate um, based upon our digest and our um, state funding and, and where we are in terms of rank. Um, the second page takes a look at um, a comparison of the, of the districts and then looks at our teacher salary schedules and of course factors in that we are still um, experiencing three days of furloughs this particular school year, which makes us have 187 days. So you take the, that number and you translate that to the other districts. What would it be at 187 days in that district? And um, you come up with where we rank in terms of the average salaries and one, at 187 days. So um, you'll see that we are um, towards the bottom. Um, in two cases, a T4 and T5, we are um, number seven above Henry um, and T6 as well. And then we move up um, in T7 to above both Hall and Henry and T7, to T4 to T7, a composite, we wind up being ranked at number, number seven as well, seven of eight districts. Um, if you look down um, to the next set of charts, you will see the T4, T7 composite, which is the last column from above, and then the average looking at the first column. So you look all the way down and it says $57,078. And then you take our composite score, our composite dollars, which is the Newton 56,324 56, and subtract that and it gives you the average that we deviate from the average, sal the average composite salary, which is $753 um, for average salary schedules at 187 days, which is a deviation of negative 1.32 percent. The next column over takes into consideration your average salaries and your um, benefits as well. So it adds those together and then gives you a new, um, a new total. So the new total is 75,970. And then if you want to find out where we rank in terms of the average of the comparison districts, what you find is you take that first number of 74,968 and you subtract it, which gives you our uh, red $1,003 um, deviation. And then finally, the last column, our QBE plus our um, local funding per 23, it shows us the um, uh, average amount, which is $131,862, and then our deviation, which is 129154 which shows us below by 2,708 for an average salary plus benefits um, percent of funding of 58, 58%, 58.05%. Um, and so that sort of just gives you an overall picture of where we are in terms of our comparison districts and where we rank. 
Um, the next sheet actually lays it out for you um, and sort of gives you a, a landscape view of the salary schedule. Um, if you'll go to the second group of charts, that is your T4 to T T7 composite salaries for 187 days and the deviation from the average. And you'll see that Newton is the top line. And um, anywhere it's red, that number, uh, we deviate from the average. So $622 we deviate in, say, um, year three. We are um, below the average. And it, it, it varies across the entire spectrum. But if you'll recall, one of the things that we've talked about is that as I looked at um, retention data and attrition data, where I was finding the biggest gap is from, from teachers or staff members who are exiting in years 10 to 20, because that group of people experienced a significant number of um, missed steps during this time. They didn't, get their, they didn't get their raises. And so what you find, instead of having a sloping up salary schedule, you have a sloping up and then a little bit of a dip. And so um, you see that the center part there is more of, a, of a, um, an adjustment or below because they missed a more steps than some people on the other ends of the scales. The bottom chart shows where we rank and just in terms of the districts that we are comparing ourselves to and by year and by step. So you see the year of experience and then where we rank. And if you'll notice in those years, 10 to 20, we rank number seven of eight districts. So my speculation and assessment based upon where our teachers or staff in that range were, were exiting was actu actually played out in the salary study. It shows that what, what I thought was happening is likely happening because it's there. Um, the next page. The first chart shows you daily rates and annual salaries for our contractual days. And it compares them to the average of all of the specific um, jobs or, or the duties and descriptions to the left. So you'll see th the positions that we were we looked at um, outside of the teacher salary schedule were our administrative positions. And then the second column shows how we rank in comparison to the districts to which we compare ourselves. And then we have our um, average daily rate and the number that says Newton plus or minus shows you that we are $9.70 in our high school principal um, rankings. We are $9.70 per day higher than the average. Um, and you can see that as you look at it for the annual, um, and that's at our, um, at our current days at 227 for our high school principals. And as you move over, you'll see that that equates to 2000 $294 above the average when you look at our, um, our days. The, uh, and you can see them played out um, for each of those positions. And as you move down, um, just picking, um, I'll just pick the middle school assistant principal, what you see is the average daily rate. And then they are $6.37 below um, the average of the other systems, middle school assistant principals, and then as an annual total, they're $1,319 below, which is a, a, a below 1.71%. The next chart um, really shows the effects of our furlough days. So once the, um, it shows our Newton days, which just sticking with high school principals, since it's the first one on the line, in Newton, because of our furlough days, high school principals work 227 days. When you've already approved to, in November to add those furlough days back in the FY16 school year. So that's already a done deal. Um, but those numbers will change and add those three days, but it just shows you that you, if you add those three days that it's, it's a good thing to do um, because the average days for the other school systems, including ours, is 229.57 days, which our high school principals still are above the average, but then you can see um, how the rest of our staff is impacted based upon um, the, the impact of the furlough days. 
um, and, and it's anywhere that's red in parentheses shows that you are that much below the average for that group. And then the last chart on this page shows you the um, administrator's salaries um, as percents of teacher salaries. And as Dr. Fordham would say, you want to always look at everything as a percentage of teacher salaries so that you don't get out of line with the teacher salaries. So we, we're looking at teacher salaries and trying to figure out what percentage of the teacher salary schedule are we, and then um, what is the group average as well. Um, and then. Um, this document actually um, compares our current um, teacher salary schedule, our certified salary schedule, on the right-hand side where it says current salary schedule for 14-15 at 187 days. So that shows you what it looks like now. The left side of the um, document shows you um, 190 days and it also um, factors in the going halfway to restore um, our teachers' salaries to what they would have been had to the 2009 scale, which is what where they would have been had they not had we not experienced the recession. And so you can go sort of line for line to see um, if you are a um, uh, let's see um, T4 at um, 10 years your current salary is $42,700. And if you follow that line over, you'll see that just the impact of going halfway back brings them to $44,393. So that's how, you, how we read, you read the chart. You look at the right side to see where you are, and then you go across to look at the left side to see where, where you would be um, with 190 days. The next page captures all of that data again, but it tells you what does it mean in terms of dollars and cents. It sort of pulls out the previous chart, takes the chart that you just looked at, and then extracts the, um, the data from there. Um, so what you have is um, the first chart on the top of the page um, shows you um, the impact of just going halfway. So it shows you what the increase would be. So just go down to 10 years, um, the, where it says 10 on the outside column, it says 10. Then look in and you'll see that the increase, without any steps or anything, it, it results in a $1,600, $1,696 increase on a T4, which is 3 point, a 3.97 increase. Then when you go down to the next chart, though, what you find is the going halfway and then um, adding the step because remember you added a we added back step increases last year so people who are eligible for steps this year receive them so that trend is continuing if you look on the outside list of numbers you see the current step so let's go back down to 10 and you'll see if you are currently 10 and you're stepping up to 11 the change in your salary will be um, $3,028 as opposed to the 1696 above, which was just the impact of going back to the 2009 salary schedule. And then, of course, the bottom chart just gives you the percentage of the state base and what the percent, what our numbers equal compared to the state salary schedule. Um, and then just for purposes of just to see what the impact would be on our administrators if you pull them out and you just looked at um, just the effects of half of a step, halfway back, what does it look like? So it gives you average salaries and then it tells you, it, this chart shows you um, going halfway what the, the final column, what the new salary might be based upon the impact of the um, going halfway to the 2009 salary schedule. So that um, captures our certificated um, look at our uh, certified staff and looking at the certificated salary schedule and, and where we are with trying to understand all of the implications of having not 
administered step increases and not done any pay raising or anything um, with the exception of what you put in place last school year. Um, the next set of charts refer to our non-certificated staff and um, this is a little bit more complicated because what you have is, is some, sometimes districts don't have the same job for job. So we might have um, a, we might call someone in our district a high school head custodian, but in another district they might call them a plant engineer and the duties and responsibilities may not be exactly the same. So it's a little bit more challenging to get a line for line comparison. And so just gonna walk you through the chart um, to get, so you understand the layout. Um, the, you see our average first column is obviously the positions. Um, the second column is our average um, hourly rates. And then it gives you the group average. So you're looking at where we could find comparisons to our, say for example, our high school head custodians under that um, title. Um, the, the group average of the districts that have that job was $16.41 um, an hour, which shows that we are $2.51% above the, uh, 51 cents above the average for a total of 15.3% above the average salary. And, um, but the interesting piece is as you, and of course we look at it in terms of teacher salary. So what does that mean in terms of teacher salary? But if you look far to the right where it says rank and then group size, Remember, we compared ourselves to seven other districts, so there's eight of us in the study. So that group size is telling you where we, where we don't have the same title. So that high school head custodian, for example, um, there were two other districts within the, the scope of the eight districts that actually have that, that title or very close to it, high school head custodian, which in our case, because it's one of two, we rank number one, um, and the average of the two salaries gets you where, where we are. So the most, um, in terms of validity, it, it, the higher number of comparisons you make, the more valid the information is as well. Um, we're also pulling in some other information to try to gather some more data about the, the folks on this list to, to try to um, broaden our scope of what is a, for example, high school head custodian in, in, more, in multiple districts outside of the eight. But at, at, for the purposes of this study and the districts to which we compared ourselves, you can see where there's direct alignment. So they, we have a um, eight of eight districts. If you'll follow on the left side in the position and go down to one, two, three, four, five, six, you'll see school nutrition assistant. And what you see there is what our average um, salary is for school nutrition assistant, which is $11.76. The group average is $11.15, which is we are 62 cents above the average, which is a 5.52% above the average. And then scroll all the way across, and what you see is that's a, there's a high correlation between the other districts because eight districts had that, that particular position and we, we rank of those eight districts number two. Um, so obviously when you get down in the chart, when you start looking at um, differences, or, or in, in the school clerk um, example where there's, it's, it's red and it just says zero, the, the red would indicate that they're below the average of the group, but you have to balance below the average of the group with are we, in, are we comparing ourselves to eight districts, five districts, one district, or are we the only district? And so you have to balance and look at the red and then come across to look at where are we in terms of um, group size. And then um, as you scroll down and look at the, um, that, still that first block, but the yellow, is, is yours highlighted yellow? Yeah. Okay. Um, when you look at the yellow, we, we looked at, um, being 5% be below the average teacher salary and highlighting these, this area as potential areas to attack um, so that we can make adjustments to increase, if necessary, the, those salaries. But you want to also be able to apply to our non-certificated staff the moving back in their salary schedules as well. So we're not just proposing or talking about moving the um, salary schedule for our certified staff, we're also looking at going back halfway for our classified staff and what the impact would be on that group. So that yellow shows you any position that is below 
five percent below the average of that of of that particular um, group of people. And then you look over um, to the far right, and you see that as a percent of teacher salary, the at five percent you start at the blue, which is six point seven two percent. So as a percent of teacher salary, they're below. So that's a hot area for us to look at. And then those blue areas also have a high correlation in terms of rank. So I'm sorry, in terms of the school systems to which we compare ourselves. Um, and that's very important information as we push forward um, trying to uh, get our non-certificated schedule, salary schedules in alignment um, and back to where they, where they would have been had we not experienced a recession. Um, the next chart is uh, just a big, uh, a blown up version of what the um, certificate or non-certificated classified personnel salary schedule would look like for the 15-16 school year. And I know all by itself it doesn't mean a whole lot to you. It's just a bunch of numbers on a sheet of paper. So it's just there for purposes of comparison. It's the next pages that you'll be interested to see. And then you'll have the salary schedule as well or the proposed salary schedule, part of it. Um, so this is a little bit of a tiny chart. And so the, the best way for, for me to read the chart and to explain it to you is to sort of walk you through a specific item. So if you'll just bear with me for a minute. If you'll look at, your char at the first chart on the top of the page and you see where it has um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, if you would just find number 7. And that number 7. Um, I just I highlighted if you might want to circle it. And then if you would go right down in that column and go on the first column to find number eight. So look at the, number, the first column and find the number eight and then come across to where your number seven is. And you should be landing in a box that says .92. Does everybody see that? Or am I all making you very confused? What that number represents, that .92, that's 92, 92 cents per hour of an increase when you apply only the going back to 2009. So just going back to halfway to 2009, you, that person who is seven years at grade eight would get a 92 cent pay increase. When you scroll, keep following that number seven down and find that same person on the bottom chart at number eight, and what that shows you is that is a 6.37 increase in their pay just at going halfway to 2009. So you're making a really significant dent in terms of um, percentages and increasing um, our non-certificated staff salary schedule. Coupled with that is the next chart. And if you'll just bear with me again on the, the next chart, and look at, um, again, going across the top of the next chart and finding that same number seven, and then finding the eight on the far left-hand side and crossing to where they meet, and you'll see that that number is $1.34 per hour increase compared to the previous chart, which was 96 cents. And the reason that that's the case is this chart also includes the step increases that you put in place last year. So our employees will get, um, if they're eligible, they'll get a step increase plus they'll get, if you so elect to go halfway back to 2009, they'll get the 2009 scale plus their step for which they would be eligible. And then if you would just follow that number seven again all the way down to the um, number eight on the bottom chart, and you can see what does, what does that mean in terms of percent increase. And that is a 9.6%, almost a 10% increase in the salary of the person who falls in that place. That's how you um, have, have those charts work together. So um, that is the end of the, the summary of all of the salary study data. Um, of course, Dr. Fordham is here. Um, because he's down, he was very down deep into the weeds with all of this stuff, and I'm, he's, we're summarizing all the data. And so if you have any questions, I would be happy to entertain them, and um, certainly Dr. Fordham would jump in wherever I am um, not sure about the nitty-gritty. So these three packets are? 
Yes, the yes, the three extra um, packets that the board members have are just the more details of the salary study itself, the work behind the summaries. <clears throat> Madam Chair, if I may. Yes. Um, I would also, um, before we move into the the green notebooks, if you have, um, if you don't have any questions at this time um, I'd like to hand out to everyone um, I'm just calling them budgetary adjustments because sometimes we forget the good work that you've done um, over the years and so um, and when I say you I'm talking about the board um, and the adjustments that have been made and I'll just wait till they get around so everybody can um, can capture them um, but you have been very busy um, over the last uh, several fiscal years paying very close attention to the budget and recognizing that, as you stated, um, when we experienced tough times, that when the dollars and cents made sense and it permitted that you would begin to pay to restore some of the things that were taken due to the recession. And so I'd just like to quickly go over what those things were. Um, in FY14, you were stored um, furlough days, two of them, which the expense of that was a um, million um, one hundred thousand dollars. FY fourteen, you also did a pay adjustment in January, which I can assure you, our staff, um, everybody, just loved that um, having that pay adjustment. Um, in FY fifteen, you actually gave a three point zero two percent raise, not to you gave it to everybody. Um, which resulted in an increase of roughly approximately $2.9 million. Um, you were also um, very conscious and looking closely at the budget in our November session and actually um, made a recommendation and, and we did give another pay adjustment to our staff um, this year as well, resulting in roughly $900,000. In addition to that, you've also add increased um, contributions to our 403B plan, um, which at one time was, uh, Peggy, I think 5%, right? 5%. Five, 5%. Right. And so up till just last year, it was 0.5%, and you have changed that to 1.5%. So we are making progress to get back to where we were. Um, you also implemented and instituted step increases for all of our employees to the, to the tune of $1.5 million. Um, you also approved an extended learning opportunity for our students and um, that those dollars and cents have been well used in Saturday programs and field trips and a host of events um, that have benefited our, our children. As a matter of fact, our teachers are asking, can we do it again? <laughs> and um, it, it really has um, really expanded our opportunities for many of our, our students and for our, our staff to have extended opportunities with their students. Um, to restore, um, you restored our six hour pairs to eight hours, um, which was roughly $400,000. And you have already approved in your November um, budget review to restore the remaining three furlough days, which will result in about a $1.6 million adjustment to, to the budget, um, thereby rendering the Newton County school system with zero furlough days for the first time in a very long time. So um, I just felt it was very important to point out to you and to, the, to our staff and to our community that um, our board is very, um, pays very close attention to the bottom line and has done as, as they said they would and has carefully examined the budget and began to has begun to restore um, our, our staff and our um, salary schedule. So for me, that concludes the salary study. And um, unless you have any questions about the um, the summary data or the adjustments um, that I would like for um, Erica and Peggy to take us through the green notebook, which is the the details. So the details in light of the salary study. Um, if that's all right with you, Madam Chair and Board. Good afternoon. Uh, we'll be starting with the um, Newton County Schools FY16 budget presentation. So for you guys, it's in your notebook, and for you guys, it should be the first um, item in your packet. So this presentation is just going to highlight um, 
some things in the budget, some increases in revenue that we are experiencing, and I'm just gonna highlight some, in the major increases in the expenditures. <clears throat> so the increases in state revenue, um, mainly it's gonna be your QBE revenue. Um, the, the state earnings is gonna increase um, about 1.2 million, and that's, that's due to the growth um, and the increase in TRS um, contributions. And then um, you have your austerity reductions, and that's gonna um, increase $3.4 million. And that is for us to either um, do teacher raises or to restore, restore cuts that were made in previous years. Um, for the QBE local share and the QBE equalization, um, both of those amounts are based on the um, sales, sales ratio study and the wealth rankings. And so those, those increases um, combined together are approximately $4 million. So the total increase in QBE revenue is gonna be um, about $8.7 million. Next page, this um, slide details the seven-year history of the m and Tax Digest. These are actual um, numbers. We do not have an amount for FY16. We were unable to obtain reliable information to, to estimate and increase or decrease, but we do feel certain that it's gonna increase slightly, <laughs> but we didn't put that on the slide because we don't have reliable information. But this slide does have the actual numbers from 2009 to 2015. And it does appear that we're headed in the right direction back to where we were in 2009. On the next page, this, this slide, um, it details the major expenditure increases that we are proposing in the budget. Um, the, the total increase is, is approximately $10.6 million. So here you have listed approximately $9 million of the increase. And the majority of that is gonna be for salary and benefits. Um, <clears throat> the first one is to restore the salary schedule one halfway back to 2009, and that would cost approximately $1.8 million. Um, to add back the three furlough days, that's gonna cost approximately $1.6 million. The increase in non-certified health insurance is $1.2 million, and that is calculated based on $150 increase per participant per month. The increase in the employer TRS contribution, the TRS contribution rate is gonna go from 13.15% to 14.27%. And that's gonna cost um, a little bit over a million dollars. We are proposing an increase in the 403B contributions of um, 1% to, to take it to 2.5%, and that will cost um, a million and sixty thousand dollars. We're proposing to um, add 14.5 additional positions at a cost of a million and seventy-five thousand um, dollars. The next few items are are supplies and textbooks and things like that. So the textbooks, um, there's an increase of $500,000 and that's mainly due to the adoption of um, foreign language materials. We do have an increase in, or we are projecting an increase in utilities and fuel costs. Um, the fuel increase would be mainly due to the um, expiration of the exemption that we had on the excise tax due to House Bill 170. And part of the utility increase also is going to be to a due to a reduction in the E-rate funding. And for instructional software and technology maintenance, there's an increase there of approximately $305,000. So the total major increases is $9,081,000 approximately. So I mentioned the 14.5 um, additional positions. So the next page details out those positions. Um, we are requesting 
additional high school teachers uh, due to in an increase in enrollment, um, as well as four elementary school teachers. And we're also requesting one elementary uh, curriculum instruction and professional learning coordinator, and this is to meet advanced ed required, required actions. We're requesting a K through 12 testing coordinator to meet the increased demands of state testing. And we're also requesting a one technology specialist to assist in maintaining instructional technology equipment to address increased requirements for online testing. And we also are requesting to add um, an executive director of operational services to restructure operational services in line with the salary study. The next page that shows a graph of, or a chart of the general fund budgeted expenditures for FY16. And you can see there that um, the majority of the cost, 87.35% is for salary and benefits. And then on the next slide, it details out the salary and benefits by function. And so what we can gather from this slide is that 76.76% of our salary and benefits are in instruction. So the next few slides are gonna give um, several proposed options. Um, since the salaries and benefits would be the, the main increase um, in our budget, we have um, prepared several different scenarios um, for you guys to consider um, in, in determining which, which route to take. So the first one, chart A, this chart is if we kept the salary schedules at the same level as they are for FY15. So what you see here is um, if you look over on the budgeted 2015-2016, you'll see the total revenues and the total expenditures. Those expenditures amount do not include any, any type of adjustment for going halfway to 2009 or anything like that. And it also does not include any increase in the 403B contribution. And then it's projected out all the way through 2018. And if, if this option were chosen, the ending fund balance in 2018 would be 18 million um, $138,000. The recommended fund balance at this level would be $11 million, a little bit over $11, $11 million. On chart B, this chart would be if we took the 2009 schedule as it is, we went all the way back to the 2009 schedule. So what you see here is in the 15-16 column, um, the, the total for the 2000, if we went all the way back to 2009, that would cost us $3.7 million. So that's included in the 2015-2016 expenditure amount there. Also, um, there is a 1% increase in the 403B, which is included in that amount. And there is a, um, the TRS increase is also included in there. And then that is projected all the way to 2018. And if this option were selected in 2018, the ending fund balance would be um, almost $3.6 million. On chart C, this chart details um, where we would be if we went halfway back to the 2009 schedule. So in the 15-16 budgeted amounts, um, those amounts include the cost of going halfway back to 2009, which is $1.8 million. It also includes a 1% increase in the 403B contributions. And if we carried that out to 2018, the ending fund balance here will be nine million three hundred thousand. On chart D, this chart is if we went 
back halfway to the 2009 schedule in 1516. And then in 1617, we went the other half way back to 2009. So by the end of 2017, we would be fully back to the 2009 um, schedule. And if you carry that out through 2018, the ending fund balance here will be $5.6 million. So those are the four, the four options or four scenarios that we came up with um, regarding the, sa the salary adjustments. On the next page, um, this, is, this is kind of just for informational purposes. Um, the first comparison here is the per pupil expenditures for our system versus surrounding counties. Um, this year we are in fifth place out of seven. Uh, I say this year, but I mean FY14 because that's the latest information that was available. Um, in FY13, we were last, we were in last place in FY13, so we have um, improved slightly on the per pupil expenditures compared to these, these counties that are listed. And then on the last page, this, this shows Newton County's expenditures compared to the state expenditures, so all the boards in the, in the state. And from this, this slide, we can see that for instruction, we are, we are spending more on instruction um, than the state as a whole. And, then, and we're also spending less on general administration um, as a, than the state as a whole. So that was a brief overview of our budget um, that we are proposing. Um, next, we can go into the um, budget itself, and if, if anyone has any, any questions on anything in the budget, um, we can go through those. I have one. Okay. I'm a little bit confused as to generating my question. The first handout indicates that we paid 900000 pay adjustments twice, and we had a step increase of $1.5 million. We make reference to the 2009 salary schedule. How did those payments impact the study today? I can understand it if we had no interruption in pay, but we did. But we still refer and going back to 2009. Shouldn't that, as a point of illustration, say we won't go back to 2009, we'll go back to 10 instead? as a reference in terms of how we are going to the base and making a reference? If, you, if I may, um, the 1% the salary adjustment was just a one-time thing. It, was, it wasn't it was a permanent adjustment to the salary schedule itself. Okay. It was just one time and done. And that was the reason why you did it, because you didn't have to maintain it. You didn't have to carry it out forevermore. So it was a way to recognize the work of our employees um, one time, um, as opposed to having to make it part of the salary schedule forevermore. Otherwise, you would have adjusted 5.02% permanently, where you adjusted 3.02% permanently. Okay, I'll take that point. I understand that. Yes. Point. But we still have an increase, step increase. Last year, yes. Last year. Yes. So, should my statement be the same then? Are we still going back to nine, even though we interrupted the schedule? with a 1.5 contribution to the step increase? In terms of the what we did this year, it's a, a natural part of the, the salary schedule. So what you're doing going forward is you're just continuing the opportunity for, for people to have steps um, on the base. So what it does is, for example, if you went up to, um, I don't know, from eight to nine in, in step, if there was a step there, then um, that's factored in your salary schedule going forward. But it's not, if, it, you missed so many steps in two, from 2008-9 to this school year. So it would be hard, if you only went back to the beginning of this school year, you would, um, you would, never, you would have a really s difficult time pulling up the, the 10 to 20 in the center, uh, trying to get them back up to the top. I, th I, think, that I'm I think I'm answering your question. I, I may not be. <laughs> I'm, I'm fine. Okay. Okay. 
Um, next, we can move over to the um, East Bloss budget tab for those of you that have a notebook. I will let Mr. Barr discuss this. <laughs> okay, it's just uh, what you have there is just a summary of the FY16 uh, capital projects. And I can run through those briefly or if you have specific questions about any of them. Replacement gym floor, as you may remember, we started that project last year and we'll be completing that this year with the schools that still need that work done. We've got paving projects at uh, some select schools, which include Fairview, Porterdale, and Indian Creek Middle School. Some, some much-needed athletic improvements at Eastside High School and Clements. We've tried to put in some band equipment this year uh, to replace some of the very old equipment that we have, some of the students are utilizing. Some replacement furniture, some planning services for school and construction projects, school buses, that total will equals about 20, 20 school buses plus four using 100% capital projects money. And hopefully from the state we'll receive some bond money which should equal three to four buses, but I don't know that number yet. Um, some equipment and software that you approved last year with our GPS equipment and laptops for mechanics. Our DVR systems on the school buses are largely not working on approximately 165 of the 211 buses. That money will replace those units and get that equipment operational. Phase three of view path, and then uh, E-rate projects, a million dollars, phone system upgrades at select schools, computer purchases, and print management, which we, is a process that we started last year, and that continues that, and I think adds another copier uh, to that copy center, so that work can continue. That's a summary. If you have any specific questions, I'd be glad to answer those. And the last page is the budget summarized by fund. So you have the general fund, and you have other state grants and special revenue funds, which shows are your federal programs, and the capital projects fund, the debt service fund, school food service your principal accounts in your after school program. And so this is a budget um, of, of each one of these different funds by function. If there are any questions, um, we can answer those. Any questions? Any reason why we changed, we had a further breakdown on functions last year. We do we do in general fund we never have on these other no. these, these are have always been that presented one. this way. Because they're really estimates, we don't know really what our federal grants for sure are gonna be. Um, if I may, Madam Chair, um, just as a point, point of reference, this is a work session, so there may be things that didn't occur to you while we were all sitting here that, um, that we, may, we may need to make an adjustment here or there. That's the point of having a work session. So you, for really for the first time, have been walked through the whole entire thing as members of the board. And as you walk away, you may um, you know, sit in a quiet place and read all these papers. Um, and then have questions, and um, certainly, you know, that's the that's the process, and that's how it's supposed to work. So that if there are things that we need to talk more about, we we do that, and we make adjustments as, as needed. Um, but um, you have everything you need, I think, to um, move forward in in terms of getting ready to for us to make a recommendation um, for our tentative uh, budget in the month of May. Um, I will note that um, the focus of this budget for, for our school system is, is truly a salary study and an implementation of, of that salary study's results so that our teachers and our school system staff are um, positively impacted for the work that they put in day in and day out. And for especially for those who have been with us um, through, the, through the recession, 
and um, have, have endured um, not having any pay increases or raises or adjustments in all of those years. So this is an opportunity for us to make that adjustment. Um, and, and I think that's it, unless there are any other questions. I have a question. Um, I, my first question is for Ms. Barr. On your capital project, are these the projects, uh, when we did the priority list at time, are any of these included on the priority list, or are these brand new projects? No, they're all, they're all included in the project. They're either on the priority list or they're part of the SPLOS referendum. Okay. Do you know how many projects are left on the priority list? <laughs> Lots. <laughs> so those projects that are left on the priority list that we're saying these are the ones that we're going to put like in place. Right. Or, okay. The other ones can wait. Um, they don't have to wait. Not, That's right. <laughs> no, they're, they're We're capturing as many of the parties. Excuse me, can I follow up? In FY 16, we will be able to apply. We do have some state money that will be available, so maybe we can align those projects with our capital funds. Okay. But that's a process that we're going through now. Okay, at some point in time, can we get a presentation of where we are with that priority list? It doesn't have to be like soon, but at some point in time, within the next few Just months. an update. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Excuse me, I, I would like to see that before we decide on the budget because holding this priority list back and we're doing the budget will be very much uh, important to that list. You can amend the budget. I'm sorry? You can, you can amend it, you know, I, if you I, want I, to I, after you see the list and, and, and as they bring projects, money. you know, to you, they've got to bring the projects to you for approval too, yeah. you know, each as they get ready to do them. I, I, I hear you and understand it, but my comfort level will be much greater if I we review that list as soon as possible. And and just for the record, the this capital projects comes directly from SPLOS dollars. It's not out of general funds. Understood. Okay. All right. And then my other question, my last question, just for clarity, I just want to make sure I'm right. That on the um, additional positions the four listed positions at the bottom, those are all brand new positions, correct? What page are you on? Um, what tab are you behind? Yeah, okay. Um, oh, you're in the, the presentation tab? Yeah, the one that the... Yes. Okay. Yes. I just want to make sure. Yes. We've never had these before, right? You have... No. Okay. No. Well, we have technology specialists. Yes, we have so technology that's technology one specialists. to them. To them. But we currently do not. Online. Yes. Like all of these listed. Well, that, that's why we need another one. But okay. they'll have the same duties as, as, the, other as the other ones, yeah. Okay. All right. Now, okay, so I thought that was my last question. I apologize. <laughs> Sorry. So with the new positions listed, um, how many other school systems have, like, these specific positions? Like, say, for example, the testing coordinator and the um, executive director of operation. Um, well, it's you don't have like a one for one, but um, what I can tell you is that our district is, is very lean. Yeah. There are fewer district administrators to carry out the work. And I don't know, Allison is looking at me. She might have some more numbers in terms of the testing piece, but... Um, with the scope and sequence of the uh, of the new milestones assessments <coughs> plus the SLOs and all of the other assessments in between. Um, it's, no, I agree it's yeah. needed with everything that is now. I like, think they have, wider. other districts have more people than yeah, what I we're recommending. That, we like, need like five more people. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we also recognize very well that, you know, it, it, we try to do the very best work that we can with the, the number of staff that we have. And um, that's where we are. Allison, do you want to, I mean, to I would just like to say that in districts our size, in talking to other district testing directors, um, districts our size typically have three people for my position or my department. Um, there is typically one to two that will handle your standardized administrations, and they split those with high school, elementary school, and now with the um, increased requirements of SLO administrations, mm -hmm. they have a person designated specifically for that as well. Okay. So uh, it's very interesting when I say there's just me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. 
Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to know how it looked in comparison to other districts because I'm just trying to figure out. I mean, I believe it's needed, but it's, yeah, yeah. it's adding one like position enough. No, but but <laughs> but so that's why I was asking. And thank you, Ms. Henderson Baker. We certainly appreciate that you are willing and ready to help us. But we are balancing that that work with the people that we have in an effort to to restore salaries to our employees and then <coughs> as we get that under control then we would come back with some different recommendations so okay. we're doing the minimum that we can to continue the our efficiency and yeah. um, with the hopes that at some point in the future we can add more teachers um, we can add more administrative staff to support teachers yeah and I just want y'all to understand that helps me in deciding which one of these yes. like will work for me because I feel like we need to make sure we have enough room, like an ending fund balance, you know, if we get to the point where we say, well, you know, we added this one position, but turns out this one position doesn't work, you know, we need a lot more. So it just kind of helps me. Thank you very much. I just have one uh, comment. Uh, I would like to see you guys put together these positions and not so many other districts but put together personnel that we can accomplish what we need to accomplish to be effective. Because sometimes we tie our hands by mimicking other districts and their makeup. Mm -hmm. We need to do what we need to do to make our district work more effective. That's yeah. what I think, and I want you all to do that. Thank you. We appreciate that. All right. I, I have an observation. Yes. Uh, I want to direct it to uh, technology specialists. On page. But I don't see a page. It's the um, additional positions. Yeah. We're requesting one additional <coughs> employee. Are we cutting ourselves short? And I say that because I think we should be engaging uh, an increase in online curriculum, and that will increase the number of people that we need to support that type of technology. Uh, are we saying that we're not, we're going to be stagnant in that pursuit? Then I think it's time then we add the support. We're going to move that direction. We've got to give him the support because it's not going to work unless he's, he's on top of it. And so we need a, 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 an approach to how we're going to do this. Well, if I may just intervene for one second. Um, Dr. Shattuck is actually working with um, his team to actually specifically address that question in terms of online programming. Um, and, and as and one to one as well, trying to ma um, put together a presentation to bring to the board um, that will specifically address the online piece that you're referring to, and, as well as um, uh, the potential of a one to one initiative at some point in the future. Um, and so the answer to your question, I think, is yeah. I mean, we can always use more staff in the area of technology, um, but we're trying to balance that 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 piece with every other department and, and the needs of everybody as well as you know the the salary piece as well um, so that and, and Dr. Shattuck I'm, I know you were addressing him I just jumped in there well that's okay that's <laughs> fine that's fine but, but I, I think this position lies in, in, in corporate America you got to spend money in order to make money and this is one of those approaches that you got to do we can't move to the next level of technology unless we support the new curriculum thing that's going and he has to be ahead of anything that we do. Yep, and I agree. And I would, once we get a plan uh, in place that details what that's going to look like, <coughs> then we can better determine what sorts of staff we need and then bring it back to the table again. So we're working on the plan that addresses your online curriculum piece and your one to one. Well, I, I hear you. I yep. don't want to be redundant. Yes. <coughs> we have good. to make a commitment yes. to the online curriculum. Yes and find out what we need so he can get it that first. That's right. And the plan won't do anything unless we make a commitment mm -hmm. to the online technology. Yes, agreed. All right. Um, Madam Chair, if I may, um, uh, Ms. Muff, if I could ask you just to specifically address, um, we, we uh, as a district have been um, looking for ways to incentivize our staff based upon um, need uh, for high demand areas or hard to staff areas like math 
and foreign language specifically, um, and looking at ways to improve retention, recruitment, um, and professional development in the growth of our staff. And um, we have it, we, we don't have a formal presentation for today, but we did add a line item to the budget that specifically addresses working towards a strong recruitment and retention process and a process that uh, supports um, hiring and, and maintaining and keeping our staff. So Ms. Buff has a, a brief little summary of what we're, where we are. The line item that Ms. Fury is referring to is actually on page six. Um, it is um, $125,000 that was not in last year's budget that will address a four-pronged approach to recruitment of teachers um, in hard to staff areas like foreign language and mathematics. Also retention in those same subjects um, and we will do that through stipends and through professional learning and then development through professional development of both our teachers and our leaders and also working to figure out what hard to staff schools we have we're going to take a, an approach to kind of analyze each school and determine what kind of hard to staff issues they have so that we can address those question mm -hmm. <clears throat> do we have any funds set aside to uh, speaking of retention uh, for interpersonal skill development because if there's good interpersonal skills relationship with the leaders and the teachers amongst each other mm -hmm. I think that plays a very important part of making sure the uh, employees stay. Yes. That has been part of our conversation and it will definitely be addressed in the plan. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Do you have anything else? I do not, Madam Chair. All right. There are no other questions. Um, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye